Hello and welcome. I'm so excited to finally be making this video. We're not only going to make a video about alkaline water machines and how they work, but I'm actually going to tear apart a $1,500 Kangen water machine just to show you. Took the whole thing apart in my garage on a workbench and I wanted to show you the nitty gritty and I didn't want to just talk about it. I wanted to do something. How cool is that, right? So we hear all the time, what is alkaline water? You know, how does it work and all that sort of thing. So we're going we're gonna to get into that. So the question is, how do they work? Well, let's, let's jump right into it. Here is my machine. I had to go out and go get it out of the garage. It had been in there for a couple of years. And by the way, I don't want to beat up on alkaline water machines at all. Like I said, obviously I have one. If it wasn't such a hassle to set up and to run and the whole thing, um, in my particular house, you know, I didn't want to replumb it to make the machine work. But I've used them. I love them. I think, I think that water is great. It gives you that little woohoo, little perk of energy, little pep in your step. And I think they're really cool. So here it is. Uh, I didn't even bother cleaning it off. Uh, here we are taking the uh, filter off the top. The next one is once you've removed that. Once I removed all of the screws, boy, there's a ton of them back there. Uh, all the components fall off. So this is looking at the machine from the back. This is the this is the back of the components. Now I know that this was originally patented and invented by the Japanese, and I'll bet we can all agree that the Japanese are incredibly smart people. But this is just a machine. It's not like it's alien technology. There's just it's just a machine. Uh, there's only so many components. There's really three basic components in an alkaline water machine. The first part is all of the electrical gives me wicks in there. So in other words, the circuit board and the wires and, the, and all that sort of thing. The next thing is this ginormous transformer. Transformers take electricity and they either step it up, in other words, they could take 110 volts and go up you know, much, much higher, or they can step down the voltage. In the case of these machines, it's stepping up the voltage, and this, was, this is the weight of this machine. This is a huge transformer. But the electrical components and the transformer are only there to support the other guy, that's the real guts and brains of the machine, and that's this here. This is a, uh, uh, how do you explain it? It's a, it's a plastic container, and inside this container are these metal plates. And the reason for the transformer, the reason for the electrical components, are because as water flows through, those plates are charged or discharged. In other words, the water itself is being bombarded with a certain frequency and voltage of electrons or on both sides. So in other words, water goes into an alkaline water machine and it either comes out acid or it comes out alkaline. Well, how do you do that? What, what is it? This, this is it right here. So here's another view. Uh, there, there's where those plates are. And on the other side, I wanted to point out here's the uh, ground wire to ground out this plate. And you notice all those screws. When I laid it down and I took out all those screws, when you pull it off, there's another plate. And because of this rivet right here, it was kind of a bummer because I couldn't, I couldn't get past that rivet. If I had broken that rivet, I would have broken the entire insides of the machine. So what I did was I peeled it back so we could take a peek on the inside. And it's a little hard to see. You probably can't see it. But what it is is there's, you can see the grids. Here's another view. Same thing. Here's the grids going down. And uh, so that's where the water, like I say, flows past those plates. Well, okay, that's interesting, <laughs> but how does it work? Let's, um, water comes in and gets electrically charged. I think we knew that from the start, but really what does that mean? So let's, let's get into exactly how that works. First, you have to answer the question, how does a pH meter work? A pH meter or the pH paper, they, they both work the same way. pH stands for parts or percentage hydrogen. So even if something's alkaline, it's still just looking for hydrogen. Let me explain that real quick. Basically, the more hydrogen that's in a water, the more acid the water. Actually, not basically. That's exactly it. In fact, um, let's, let's get into a water for a second. So you have two hydrogens and one oxygen. This is the most stable thing on the planet. If it wasn't for this, we wouldn't be alive. On an oxygen, there's what's called a valence. Now, if you've ever seen like a big molecule you know, that's put together, well, all of those spots where the molecules fit together are very, very specific. It looks kind of random when you, you know, when you first see it, but it's not at all. So every spot on a molecule, so for example, on the case of oxygen, it has two, and the two valences, and in the case of an oxygen, it has two valences with electrons. So in other words, it has an electron to give away. 
Well, in the case of hydrogen, they're missing electrons, or drawn like this. So in other words, there's a minus here. On the oxygen, it's a plus. On hydrogens, it's negative. Therefore, you have opposites attract. Boom. You have a stable H2O. So to illustrate that, if you take a pH meter and you read pure water, it would read neutral. In other words, the oxygens and the alkalins, or the oxygens and the water, uh, oxygens, hydrogens and the oxygens, they're all in balance. Everybody's happy. But I illustrated it this way. Now, this would be massively, massively acidic water, and it's not accurate, but for the sake of making this video, I wanted to show you. I put just uh, stable waters, right? These would be H2Os. But then you have these guys. Who's this? These are extra hydrogens floating around. So if your pH meter read this, it would say, oh, this water is very, very acid because there's extra hydrogens. And on the flip side, it's the same thing. With this one, I have waters, but then I have these oxygens floating around. And there's no extra hydrogen. It would read this as massively alkaline. And on top of that, if you use a, uh, what's called a millivolt or millivolt meter, it would read these extra spots on these oxygens as free electrons, and therefore it would say this, this water has a very, very high charge. In other words, it has the ability to give away lots and lots of electrons because there's all these extra electrons to give away. So this water, boy, if any hydrogens got around this water, boom, these, these oxygens would, would grab them up. That's their job. They're looking for it. Opposites attract, right? So now we get, uh, now we get to the good part. Back to the alkaline water machine. What is this globber looking thing? <laughs> this is my incredibly well drawn uh, chunk of dirt floating in water. So now picture for a second, this is water and this is just a piece of calcium, a piece of copper, a piece of a piece, a tiny little microscopic piece of something floating in the water. Kind of got to go into the imagination here. So even in well filtered water, even after a charcoal filter, there's still particulates in the water. So it doesn't really matter what it is, but this, this guy, he's happy. He's, he's stable, right? All of those valences are filled. He's not looking for hydrogen. He's not looking for oxygen. He's happy. He's just a piece of dirt floating around. Well, now you run him through those, those uh, plates. And in this case, I drew it with all of these minuses. In other words, you run him through the plate and you strip all the electrons off of this piece of dirt that's floating by. Well, what would happen? Now he's hungry, very, very hungry, for electrons. And if you put him in the middle of a bunch of water, so here's these H2Os and you put this guy, this is, this is a um, unnatural occurrence, I guess you would say, because you've, you've run it and you've used all this electricity to charge that piece of particulate and it would be, it would be desperately looking for a, a positive charge, which of course the oxygens carry a positive charge so I drew it like this. In other words, all of the oxygens would glom onto this piece of dirt and it would knock off or leave the hydrogens out in the water. Well, what would that do? You take your pH meter, you read that water, all it can read are the hydrogens that are now floating around. And it's going to read massively, massively acidic because you've altered the water. So the same thing would happen if you charged this piece of dirt. If you if you put positive electrons, it would grab all of the hydrogens and leave the oxygens out floating around. Therefore, it would read very, very alkaline. And all of a sudden, you've created alkaline water and you've created acid water. But is that completely accurate? You see, when the electrons go back to normal, in other words, that's a, like I say, it's, a, it's not a natural thing. So those electrons can't be stuck to that piece of, of dirt forever. So when they go back to normal, when those electrons go away, well, the water goes back to normal. It goes back to whatever pH it was when it started. So when the electrons go back to normal, the H2O goes back. That means they never left. In other words, let's say you have a, like a lot of people, when they have alkaline water machines, they'll have like a, a stainless steel bottle. So they'll make up this water, they'll put it in a stainless steel bottle, and it'll stay, let's say, alkaline for about two days. Well, how electrons can travel through stainless steel. They can go back, they can, you can lose your electron charge. But hydrogens and oxygens cannot go through a stainless steel container. So if your pH meter read it and said that there's no hydrogens in there, two days later you come back and you say, oh, there's lots of hydrogens now. In fact, it's back to normal. Where'd it come from? 
it's not magic, it, it's chemistry. They went, you know, where were they? All it was was your pH meter couldn't read it. Couldn't read it because they were attached to that piece of dirt. That's what happened. So it's not true, not true alkaline or acid water. It's altered for sure. But it's not true. In other words, you didn't remove the acidity or hydrogen from the water. You just bound it. It was bound, but it didn't go anywhere. So, with the alkaline water, because I don't want anybody to think I'm beating up on your alkaline water machines, because I'm not. I'm just given the chemistry. You do get free electrons. In other words, if you bombard a, a piece of soil, dirt, with electrons, it's going to grab all the hydrogens. Oxygens are free. But you're not removing the hydrogen or acidity <clears throat> from the body. And there's a real bad disadvantage to that. In other words, if you truly removed acid from the body, things would be different. In other words, the alkaline water machines are great. There's all these great testimonials because you're getting free electrons and that's what our body runs on. We are electrical beings and you're drinking more water, which is great, but you're not truly removing the hydrogen. In other words, it's not bound and gone. So that's, that's a real disadvantage. In other words, like, um, you could have a person that would be septic. Let's say they're in septic shock. Let's say they're in the hospital and they they're, have a bacterial infection which is producing massive amounts of acid in their veins and yet you know they're, they're on the verge of dying. They could just drink that alkaline water, boom, it would go back to normal because it would glob onto all those hydrogens and they go back to normal. Doesn't happen. They may feel better, but it doesn't work that way. So let's get on to um, uh, phenomenal. What is phenomenal? Because I think I need to explain that while we're here. Phenomenal is the same thing. Here you have a, a stable oxygen and you have the two valences on an oxygen, but what phenomenal is, is we've simply removed one, we removed one hydrogen. That's a double patented process to figure out how to do that. And it's taken, nobody else has ever figured out how to do this yet and yet get it so incredibly high. And the, the other real advantage is, is that we can have something with a pH that's so high. In other words, a pH meter says, man, there are no hydrogens in this water. Um, way, way up there. In fact, phenomenal concentrate is like a 12.25 or a 12.75 pH. That's insane. That's, that's so incredibly alkaline. And usually, something that's that alkaline would, would do things. It would, it would burn the skin and things like that. But of course, phenomenal, you can stick your finger in it. And the reason why is because it's the way we've created it. We've simply removed the hydrogens, but it's not caustic. In other words, it's not, it doesn't eat, eat away things. So this also is an unstable molecule in some ways. What do I mean by that? This molecule is called a hydroxide, and hydroxides are unstable because this valence, this extra electron, desperately wants to be filled. In other words, nature does not like things out of balance. So it's looking for a hydrogen. When phenomenal is in the concentrate form, it, there's no hydrogens that can get through the bottle. In other words, it can't, it can't go back to normal. It's totally stable. If you took that, it's pretty interesting actually, if you took the concentrate, say poured it in a glass and left it in an open glass, you would very quickly see a film within about three or four minutes, a, a film form on the top of it. What that is, is it's actually so desperate for hydrogen, it would start grabbing it out of the air. It would grab car, uh, carbo uh, carbon dioxide out of the air, turn it into carbolic acid, and you can see this little film over the top of it. <laughs> really cool, actually. I filmed it and then sped it up before. It's really cool to watch. Anyway, my point is, is that it's unstable in the sense that it wants to get back to normal. So when you take an ounce of Phenomenal, you pour it in 32 ounces of clean distilled water, now, you've stripped out all of the extra hydrogens. There's countless trillions of missing hydrogens in that water. And the advantage is when you drink it, it's going to find hydrogen or acidity. It's going to find it. It's going to bind it. It's going to fill this valence and turn back into H2O. And it's literally removed the hydrogen. Because now it became water again. And you, you get rid of it the same way you get rid of water. So that's why with Phenomenal you get that awesome energy boost. You know, you're, you drink your Phenomenal and then you're bouncing around, you're doing stuff, and it's for two reasons. One, is you're getting this extra electron, and you're, you can look at it either way. You're lowering, you're getting rid of hydrogen, which hydrogens are looking to steal your electrons, and they're also stealing your oxygen, and you've literally boost oxygen levels. And you, you're, you've bound it, and you're getting rid of it. It's the coolest thing in the world. 
Anyway, I hope uh, I hope that was fun. I had a good time tearing my alkaline water machine apart, and I have a good time explaining it. Enjoy your alkaline water. Enjoy your phenomenal. Either one. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.